So now we're in R2 and we're going to Telnet over to R1 and we're going to log in with our credentials for NOC. And then I'm just going to go ahead and quickly write the configuration and exit back out again. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to Telnet back to R1 and this time I'm going to log in as my Arch Nemesis Evil Packet and get into configuration mode if I type it correctly. Evil Packet's not that good at typing. So what I'm going to do is I had that loopback interface configured earlier to 1.1.1.1. I'm going to go ahead and change that to 2.2.2. And then leave a description saying evil packet was here. And then I'm going to break out of configuration mode and exit. So now if I jump back over to R1, I'm connected on the, well, this kind of ruins the surprise here with the logging messages here, but pretend you didn't see that. So now I'm on R1 and I've got a message saying, oh, your OSPF is broken, blah, blah, blah. I do a show run. I see that the configuration was written at 559 by the knock and then at 602 evil packet struck. So as I said, we don't know that he actually made a change or what it was because he could have just done a control Z, but we can be reasonably assured that he made some nasty change. Now I could do a show log and I could see here pretty much what was done that um, he had configured from the console. Well, really not. He was on VTY, he'd been telnetted in. And I'm probably going to be able to guess that he did something to loopback zero. So now if I do a show run, interface loopback zero, you can see here what he did. But the cool thing here is with the show run, it looks like he didn't write this because the last write was done by knock. And unfortunately, just in the lab, it's only a few minutes earlier. But then he made this change, and if he had written it, we would have expected to see the last NVRAM config, not only by Evil Packet, but after this 1802 timestamp. Okay, so you should be able to do a show start. And I can see that the loopback zero used to have an IP address of all ones, whereas now it has all twos and also has the calling card of evil packet on there. Like I stated in the slides, not always going to work out this way because depending how long ago the configuration was last written, there could be any number of changes since then. But it can come in handy if you compare those two timestamps for the last written configuration versus the last change. You might get lucky and have something like this happen. So I've gone through and I've reversed out evil packets changes. I've set the IP address back to quad ones and I've removed the description. And then I've written the configuration. If I do a show run interface L0, we can see that it's back to normal. What I want to show you though is if I do a show run, that we do see the configuration change and the last time that it was written. We can see that it was a real short period between those. So the configuration change was made at 1812.55 and then two seconds later the configuration was written. So we're reasonably assured that whoever made the last change also wrote the configuration. Thing is we don't have usernames on here and the reason why that is, is if I do a show run section console zero we don't have login local on here. So I'm not going to get on the security soapbox and preach for too long but just really keep this in mind that when you have a line like the console line or auxiliary line or god forbid you have vty opened up with no authentication when the changes are made it's not going to show who did this so anyway stepping down quickly i'm not going to beat that into the ground so i'm going to make this a little quick here i'm not going to take you through it in real time but i've logged in as evil packet and i've left a disparaging message for packet lab so now i want to cover my trails and i say clear log clear it and then I exit. I'm like ha 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 the perfect crime I've gotten in here I've told packet lab that he's a sheep fucker and now I've covered my trail by clearing the log so if I go over to r1 and I do a show log well there's nothing to it because it's been cleared but now if I do a show run I can see that the last change was made at 615 by evil packet so this is good to keep in mind too that this can come in handy if your log buffer has filled up or if somebody has cleared the log okay so one last time we're going to log in as evil packet and get up to some naughtiness so we're going to go into configuration mode and before we do that let's do a show run because i want to show you what the state of this is before we get up to evil. So we can see here that right now the last changes and the last writing of the configuration were done by 
Packet Lab. So now I go into configuration mode and I'm going to be really evil. I'm going to go into interface 00 slash 0 and rather than leaving a description, I'm going to go ahead and wreak havoc by shutting down this interface. So now if we remember back to our configuration, R1 and R2 are the only devices in this topology and they are connected only by one connection and that is the serial interface between R1 and R2. So by shutting this down, I've effectively broken the WAN. So let's go ahead and do that. Ha 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 that's my evil cackle. And we are actually shut out right now because we had telneted in from R2 to R1. We shut that interface. We've locked ourselves out. Unfortunately, most of us have probably gone through this at least once in our life, and it is a horrible experience. So let's say Packet Lab gets in here, and he's on R1 through the console port. And you might see something kind of strange here already, but we go in and let me clear off some space here we do a show IP in brief to see what the issue is and I'm like damn it somebody administratively shut the WAN interface well let me go ahead and check out by doing a show run and I'll bet you it's that stupid evil packet fellow well huh it was me I did this I the good and wonderful packet lab shut this down well it must have been because I'm looking at this and it says the last configuration change was at 18 18 11 by me and then I wrote it at 18 12 well what the deuce I didn't do this and as they drag me out with my hands chained behind my back can you figure out why this is why when evil packet got in and changed this that it didn't show up and I'll let you think about that for a second. So maybe you know the answer already. Let me give you one more clue. What did we say that this actually registers, this last configuration change? Remember we said that it doesn't exactly measure changes in that you can get in to configuration mode, hit Control Z and break out, and it will record that as a configuration change. So that's the clue. I'll give you a few more seconds here. So what had happened here was that Evil Packet had logged in. He'd gone ahead and telneted in. He got in, in and he had shut down the WAN interface, which basically locked him out. Well, let's go back to R1. And if we do a show users, and when we issue this command, we should see that the only user should be me on the console port because I have come in later to try to repair the network. Well, what is this? Why do we see Evil Packet here? Because what had happened was he had logged in, he had gone to the serial zero interface, he'd shut it down. At that point, it killed the telnet session. He was locked out. So it's still showing him logged in here, but because that line is no longer live, he's not able to do anything. And that explains why this configuration change did not get recorded. Because remember we said it's going to record the time that you break out of configuration mode. So if I go in here... open this up now I do a show run it's going to show that I was the last one to make the change although there's no name here we go back to R2 if we hit enter our telnet session is reestablished because that interface is back up again so now if I go ahead and hit control Z to get out of there and my login actually spoils the surprise such as it is we can see that the last change was made by evil packet so that's one more shortcoming of this command is that it's going to register when you exit configuration mode. So in the case where you break the connection either by design or by accident, it's not going to timestamp you because it's still waiting for you to issue the exit or control Z to break out of configuration mode before it writes that. Okay, so I think we've beaten this to death on the CLI. Let's go back to the slides and wrap up this lesson. So to summarize, when you're troubleshooting, you may need to find out when the last change was made to a device and hopefully who made that last change. There's a number of ways to do this, but a quick and easy way to find this information is to simply issue the show run, or show running configuration command from privileged exec mode. And if your clock is authoritative and we covered that in this lesson, you'll be able to look at the first few lines of output and hopefully determine who last changed the running configuration and when they made those changes. You can do the same thing for who wrote the configuration as well. So keep in mind that the last change is actually when a user last 
exited configuration mode. And we see we saw a couple examples, one where you're just going into configuration mode, making no changes, hitting control Z and breaking out. And the other one was where we showed evil packet login, knock down the only WAN connection into that router. So he never really exited configuration mode. And we saw how that can throw off what you think you're looking at when you're looking at that last configuration line. One thing I forgot to show is that this information does not persist through a power cycle or a reload. So if you were to power cycle a device, it's not going to keep that information in the show run. But even with these limitations, it's really nice to know that this exists so that you can do a quick and dirty and hopefully find out when the last change was made to a device or when it was last written. And this can help you out quite a bit in troubleshooting. Thank you for joining me in the Packet Lab today. As always, I hope this helps you on your route to becoming a network guy.